Hi everyone, this is Phil from statisticsmentor.com. In this video, I'll be showing you how to conduct a very simple analysis for the one way between ANOVA. Recall that the idea of ANOVA is we're comparing the means of several groups and it's an extension of t-test. Recall that t-test we're comparing the means of two groups and over an ex extension to that to more than two, although it could be used for two as well, but generally where it's used for three or more groups. Now, in ANOVA we have two types of variables. One is the response, the DV, and that is measured on the scale. It's continuous variable. The other type of variable is qualitative. It is the factor. Now one way ANOVA means that we have one factor. So one IV. And that IV, that factor, has is split into levels. Let's look at the example here. Um, this is from an experiment. I'll recall that uh, ANOVA is, is, is a method to analyze differences in groups for experimental data. So hence it's used by a lot of um, people who do conduct experiments. Okay, so what we've got here is an experiment where we administer one of three drinks to each participant and then ask them and then time them to complete a task. So here we have the response of DV, which is time to complete the task, and that is continuous. And then we have the factor, and there's only one factor, which is why it's called one-way ANOVA. And uh, there is one of three drinks, drink one, drink two, drink three. Look under the variable view, drink values, you can see there's three types of drinks. So this makes it a one-way ANOVA. Now where does the word between come from? One way betwe between comes from the design of the experiment. Each participant is on administered only one of the three drinks. Technically speaking, uh, each participant experiences only one level of the factor, as opposed to more than one. For example, if each participant experienced drinks one, two, and three, and perform the tasks each time, then this would no longer be between and over. All right, so we explain why this is called a one-way between and over. Now, just like with regression, there are assumptions for and over analysis, and they are this: that the dv are scale i continuous, a dv are normally distributed, that the population variance across the levels of the factor are equal, this is otherwise known as the homogeneity of variances, and the observations in each of these um, the observations must be independent, but that is from the design of the experiment, that's sampling problem. All right, that's that's when you collected the data. Once we've collected the data, we assume that this holds. Okay. Now, next we need to talk about the balanced and unbalanced design because look at this. ANOVA is robust against normality. Basically, that means that if your data isn't normally distributed, that this ANOVA basically it still works, so we say it's robust against normality. And this is so okay so long as you're, you are not, your departure from normality is not great and as long as the experiment is a balanced design. Now what do we mean by balanced design? Balanced design means you've got the same number of observations in this case, same number of participants who experiences each level. So you've got the same number of people who experience drink one, the same number of people who drinks two, same number of drinks three. If that's the case, 
then it's robust to normality. There is also this thing about homogeneity of variances and if your design is balanced then your ANOVA is also uh, robust against that as well. Now as a st first step to ANOVA analysis we might want to look at a plot to see if there's any differences in the means across the levels. Several such plots are available. We can look at the error bar chart, we can look at a box plot. Let's look at the box plot. Go to graphs, use chart builder, okay that. Click on this column, um, where is it? Box plot. And then we want this one here, the submenu. Drag it, left click of the mouse, keep, hold, keep your hand down and drag it into this box and release your finger on the mouse. Transfer the DV, here being time, into the Y axis. Take the IV, which should be uh, which should be uh, qualitative, so if it's got a ruler by it you have to change it otherwise it won't work. Drag this down to the x-axis and then we go OK. And here it is. Now since it's not so clear because we have all this empty space here we can just edit that. Double click on the chart like so to bring up the chart editor. Click on this vertical axis so that the yellow halos appear all around the numbers. Do that twice, box appears. We go to scale, now set the minimum value to a higher number but not exceeding any of the lower, not exceeding any of these lower values. So we can go for 15. That should make the graph more better scale. There you go, look that looks better. Now, from this, you can see that any part of the box here which overlaps will suggest that there's no difference between the groups. Um, so we've got time here, by the way, we've got time here, we've got the drinks, there are three types of drinks, one, two, and three. Drink one here and drink two is, appear to be similar. These two drinks, notice, that are lower level than drink two. So suggesting that the time, mean time for people on taking drink two it takes them slightly longer to complete the task than people in drink one and three. All right. Also the width of these boxes gives you an idea is the variances of the groups equal or not. All right. So they appear to be similar width but we'll have to test that formally. Okay. Now since this is a balanced design, I'm going to show you how why it's balanced in a moment. Um, we're not too bothered about normality then. So let's just run it. Let's run a box standard ANOVA, one-way ANOVA. We go to Analyze, Compare Means, One-Way ANOVA. We transfer time into a dependent list. We transfer factor, oh yes, into the factor, like so. Next we need to test the homogeneity of variances. To do that we click on the options and homogeneity of variance test we check that. Also a nice idea to have a look at the descriptives which give us the mean and standard deviations. All right. And an additional plot is the means plot which will be the mean of each of the reaction uh, response, the time taken to complete the task after taking each of the drinks. Press continue then OK. Okay, so we have now three boxes and one chart, uh, one graph. So the descriptives here now tells us that with drinks one, two, three, there are same number of participants to being ten. All right, so that makes a balanced design: ten, ten, ten equal. They're equal participants in each. You can see that the mean, yes, is mean for drink two is higher, twenty-two, compared to drink one and three, which are coming around twenty. Okay. The standard deviations are of a similar scale. Now, 
This next test then, test of homogeneity of variances, is a test of this of the condition required that the variances across the three groups are the, are the same. The null hypothesis is that the variances across the three across the levels are the same. Levine statistic 0.105. The significance level, either the p-value is 0 0.901, exceeds 0.05. So, using the rule that if p is low, null must go, we do not reject the null. So, in other words, the condition of homogeneity of variances is satisfied. So we continue. Now, then we go into the important ANOVA table and ultimately all these columns is to use first three columns are used to derive the F test test so every time I say that word test you know there's a null and the alternative the null alternative always for this uh, ANOVA for ANOVAs is that there is no difference in means across the levels of your factor look at the associated p-value is 0 less than 0.05 use the rule again that if p is low null must go p is low because it's lower than 0 0.05 so we reject the null the null must go if we conclude therefore there is very strong evidence since it's even less than 0 0.01 very strong evidence that to reject the null of no difference in means across the groups All right. now the means plot, which doesn't show us anything that the box plot didn't show us, these are simply each, right, we've got drink one, mean is, came out close to 20, recall, mean for drink two came close to 22, and the mean for drink three came close to 20 as well. So all this is doing is dot, 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 and it's just joining them up, joining them, I guess, to show you that. I don't know why, they, there's no need to join them really, you can just see from the dots that they are uh, different. And what this test is saying that there's a significant, uh, that difference is significant. There is one, there is a difference. Not that there is a significant difference, there is uh, evidence of difference. So that's it. Now, that's the bog standard one, but from here, you your next part of the analysis is to say that since there is you've shown that the, you found that evidence there is difference in means next question is you would perform pairwise comparisons so to, to see where the differences lie so is it between 1 and 2 1 and 3 or 2 and 3 okay and that comes under topic of pairwise comparisons now as final remark let's go back to this Levine's test suppose that it is not satisfied and your design was not balanced, i.e. didn't have the same number of observations across three levels, then how? what would you do? Would you still report the F? Well, if the assumption is not satisfied and your data is, and your design is not balanced, you could try transforming the variables, the original data, the response times, sorry, the time, the DB, DV, to make it, to make the variances more, uh, more uh, equal, and hopefully to improve uh, normality as well if it wasn't satisfied, or we can use a non-parametric version of this ANOVA. Okay. Now, how would you, going back to the transformation, how you know what, how would you transform the data to make it more normal or to make the variances more equal? That really depends on the distribution of your data if it's very very skewed positive skewed and you don't have any negative values you might use a log transform which will help normalize and also stabilize the variance otherwise you might consider a more general box cox type transformation okay right so just to sum up ANOVA one way between ANOVA we're comparing uh, more than two the means of more than two groups so it's an extension of the t-test and uh, to run it we have to check that some conditions hold normality equality of variance and the first test we looked at the well 
the main test, the F test, is the null is that there's no difference in means across the groups. If you find that there is a difference in means across groups, then the next step is to look to see where the differences lie. If there is no, but if there's no evidence of difference in means, then basically that's the end of your analysis. Okay, right, well done, finished.